specifically speaking for quant so i think uh, there are three main pillars for cracking quant section so many people are uh, aware of the first two that is speed and accuracy but i think the third and the most important part is the strategy and i think that is the most important for quant and something that actually people tend to neglect and what people try to do is that they try to make someone else's strategy theirs and i think this is the biggest blunder anyone can make your strategy has to be your own you need to sit down realize what is your strength what is your weakness what works for you what doesn't work for you and devise a tailor made strategy for yourself i think till the time you don't do this probably you will be running someone else's race or some running or living someone else's life don't do that everyone has their own capabilities their own strengths i think the first thing you need to make absolutely clear is form a strategy that is tailor made according to your needs and your requirements then the question obviously comes is as to how to make the strategy so there are multiple ways to make a strategy one can be just going with the preparation trying to find out uh, the topics you are comfortable with and you are not comfortable with other method can be uh, giving as many marks as you can then try to find out from the score and from the analysis as to okay this is something that i'm good at this is something i'm good, uh, not good at this is something that has been working consistently and this is something probably which is probably working but i am not very comfortable or something i cannot do for a long run and hence i don't comfortable i don't feel comfortable in that shoe and i need to change that so keep changing it till the time you find that right spot where you think that okay this is something that will work for me this is something that sits right underneath my strengths and my weaknesses and this is something that i can actually follow what people do is that people set un- unnecessary or probably uh, they try to have uh, sort of limits or sort of targets which are sort kind of uh, unreachable or difficult to achieve for a long run so i think that needs to be made so sure that what whatever strategy that you are applying you are able to perform it or uh, continue with it consistently along the mocks that you go based on the syllabus like for me i belong from a not maths background so for me maths was always a challenge so i took up the syllabus each topic i started covering all those topics first from ncert to clear all my uh, basic concepts and then i started with uh, giving sectionals i gave sec- i used to give one sectional for quant one for dlr and one for varc almost every day um there were exceptions obviously where i didn't used to give for one or two uh, reasons but yeah almost every day i made sure i give at least three sectionals and i started preparation topic wise uh, so first i'll go through quant like what i did with quant was i finished ncert then i uh, started solving all those books which are available online and few of the past year papers so i started going through those questions because what happens is after we clear our concepts there are a lot of things which are mixture of a lot of concepts so i think that is something that you know cat uh, does so it's not like if it percentage the question will only be from percentage it will involve a lot more other topics so it's important to practice that way so after clearing my concepts i focused on more on practicing so i practiced from a lot of books i gave a lot of sectionals and uh, this kept on uh, i kept on doing this for quant till september uh, coming to dlr for dlr um, since the first day i somewhere felt that dlr was the strongest section that i had because of my undergraduation also it involved a lot of logical reasoning and data interpretation that was something related to my undergraduation field so for dlr or only focus on the sectionals and mocks i did not do anything else in dlr but for varc i made sure that i read a uh, newspaper every day at least the editorials in the newspaper and i used to you know uh, spend 2 3 hours reading one editorial in order to you know understand it and see how can you know some sentences can be framed better or what it actually meant and then what all questions can be framed from those editorials and how it can go forward so the main thing what is the main advantage of reading editorials is that you get a lot of different uh, topics in editorial on one day it can be very technical topic other day it is very political so 
when we cover a lot of different area and the topics we get to understand different areas and cat always has it is not that there are if there are six uh, six passages they'll all be you know politically related or historically related they'll be from different fields so it's important to understand different fields uh for example the science student they might be very good with you know the uh, passages which are technology based or something which is science based but they might not understand or very be uh, very comfortable with topics which are political uh, has political orientation or something like history which usually comes in uh, cat so i focused more on that and i continued with giving sectionals and this preparation till september um between september uh, like between august i could not study due to some personal reasons so but there was a break for approximately one one and a half month where i did not study at all uh, from october i made sure that i gave at least one mock every day uh, and i never gave more than one mock because giving mock is i guess 20% of the work 80% of the work is actually analyzing that mock uh, cat is all about choosing the right question and you know uh, doing that right the question you choose correctly so one thing which is always disadvantages in cat is you choose the wrong question you are not able to do that question and you end up wasting a lot of your time so uh, mocks analyzation of the mock help us in that sense so i used to analyze mocks see what are my strengths areas where where i you know take least amount of time and do questions correctly so that is what i did and uh, after that so this i did for next 2 3 months till my cat exam so this was my whole uh, strategy of preparation for cat prepare like you have never won before and perform like you have never lost before i think cat exam you know not only tests you on the three pillars of vrc content dlr it tests you a lot on your mental toughness on your attitude on your personality traits first of all each candidate needs to understand the demand of the cat exam they need to understand what each section is trying to test them upon varc tests them upon speed and comprehension the way to cracking varc is extensive practice i would say so understanding the demand of the exam understanding the difficulty level of the paper and tweaking your strategy then and there is the key to varc now what does lrdi test for you it tests your decision making it tests how self aware you are so the way to cracking dilr is nothing but the mocks it is because the kind of questions that you get in the mocks are very different from even what you get in the sectionals and it is a paper of strategy so you need to strategize uh, very very nicely in this section it's a the section of decision making so the way to go about quant is first of all as you said that you know you you need to have exceptional conceptual clarity you need to solve every kind of questions and even revisit them then you need to start solving your one hour sectionals or your mocks because at the end that is a paper which tests you on your strategy so you should know that okay i i am comfortable with arithmetic i am comfortable with algebra i am comfortable with n number of things and this is the way that i am going to attempt the paper so give a mock see that okay i am comfortable with algebra i am comfortable with these things and these things i can skip and i can focus on something which i am not good at ideally july and august should be dedicated to working on your weaknesses whatever are your weaknesses do it after that basically september and october should be focused on dedicating on your strengths and your strategy because weaknesses okay you can cover to an extent but you should not leave out on what you are good at you need to maximize at the end so if you are good at something you should make sure ki i shouldn't leave any kind of question if it comes from this section and you should need work on strategizing your paper september october focus on your strengths november consolidate everything revisit and be self aware be very confident of what you know and what you don't know when you enter that examination hall uh another thing you know i would really uh, uh want to add is during uh, this phase of preparation i mean uh, i uh, really uh, do not have a uh i mean a great idea of when are you going to appear for the cat but try to give the mocks and simulate an environment like cat as much as possible try to take the mocks very seriously i never studied uh, i never studied a day before my mock i always made sure that i uh, handle it like cat i uh, created pressure in my mind that this is the final day this is a d day 
and uh, you know sometimes i would uh, really screw up my mock because of extra added pressure but i think you know all of this helped me handle the d day as well so start taking the mocks very seriously start analyzing your mocks after each uh, attempt very seriously really not exhaust yourself during this preparation there are a few things you know uh, i'm uh, see hobbies are something uh, you guys might feel at this point in time that if you pursue a hobby right now i'm uh, i would uh, just be giving some sort of a gyan but definitely they help in cat because the more you, more your more relaxed your mind is the more uh, your uh, i mean more uh, efficiently you are going to handle the exam that's uh, yeah i mean uh, these two tips i think you know uh, start taking your uh, start taking the mock seriously uh, simulate the environment like cat and uh, you know just relax uh, uh, feel i mean make yourself at ease so that uh, you know you do not exhaust yourself in the preparation and uh, on the d day you are uh, able to handle yourself very well also um, you know uh, i think you know the another part of the session is going to be the life here at iim ahmedabad so before coming here you know uh, i must naturally tell you that uh, you know uh, after the cat result and all uh, during the gdpi uh, during the uh, during this inter- the time between the cat result and the interview process and then post the interview when the results are awaited that time is a lot more uncertain i mean you do not know how your interview went or even before that you do not know even after scoring a good percentile which calls are you going to receive definitely a higher percentile can guarantee you as many calls as possible but it's not always that you are going to receive each and every call it's just that you have to i mean uh, have your best bets on whatever best call you get you have to really prepare yourself uh, i mean uh, focus also one thing you know uh, right now do give some sort of attention to the current affairs as well because that helps you uh, create the ability to assess and analyze the things logically and rationally so uh, you must have read critical reasoning in your brc right start reading the articles and the passages and the current affairs with that kind of uh, attitude like you critically critically analyze them that's going to help you not only in your unseen passages and uh, reading comprehensions in uh, vrc but also you know post uh, your catalysts when you receive some good calls it's going to be much more helpful 